This video will show you two different approaches to retrieving a bond's full and flat price when we have the realistic situation of a settlement date that occurs in between two coupon dates. In the first approach, I'll use the calculator's built-in bond worksheet, which is naturally well suited for this kind of problem. In the second approach, I'll get the same answer, but I'll use the time value of money functions that are on the third row of the calculator and that are, are more natural for many of us. But this will require computing the bond's cash price on the last coupon date and then compounding it forward to the settlement date. This question is from our own database. It's BT505.1. Here's the text of the question below the text of the question. I've pulled out just the six assumptions that we'll use in the calculator, but they're redundant to the question. The question is, a U.S. corporate bond that matures on October 1st, 2021 with a par value of 100 pays a semi-annual coupon with a coupon rate of 9% per annum. It pays these coupons on April and October 1st, and it offers a yield to maturity, a.k.a. yield, of 4% per annum. If it settles, or that's the settlement date, on September 1st, 2019, which is nearest to the bond's flat price, which is also known as the bond's quoted or clean price. So we have here a situation of we're pricing a bond on a settlement date when it's between the coupons. So here that same information is repeated. The only thing that's not explicitly in the question is the day count convention. This is a U.S. corporate bond. If it were a U.S. Treasury bond, for example, our day count would be actual at actual. Corporate and municipal bonds in the U.S. are day count 3360. So I'm going to show you two approaches. The first approach in the calculator uses the built-in bond worksheet, which is very good for these types of problems. We price the bond on a settlement date that falls between coupon dates. I access that with the second, and then I hit this second bond function. It's located down here above the nine. It's not, that's not where I would naturally expect it. I would naturally expect it up here, but here it is down here. Notice I hit that second. So I got the visual feedback that I'm going to use a second function. And now I'm in the bond worksheet and it's betrayed here by visual indicators here on the label bar at the top. Enter telling me I can enter, confirm these assumptions, but the up down arrow telling me I can cycle through the variables in the bond worksheet. I'm in the bond worksheet. I can cycle through the several variables and then I can also compute the price, which is one of the variables. It starts here with the settlement date and my settlement date again is September 1st, 2019. It's already in here because I did this before I recorded the video, but let me re-key it so we see how that works. The dates are, we have two formats in the calculator. If you're using the default, it's going to be US. And that, as you can see, month, um, month, day, and year. And the way that we entered this does take a little practice is we do nine for the month. Then I do a period. Then I go to the day. It's the first day, so I need to do zero, one. And then the year is 19. And then I hit enter. September 1st, 2019 settlement date. I'm good with that variable. Now I'm going to go down arrow to the next one. And you can see that's the coupon. I want the per annum coupon rate of 9%. So I enter the 9, or I say 9, then the enter. And I'm good in terms of that variable. I go down arrow, right, cycling through the bond worksheet to the next variable which is the redemption date. That's my maturity of October 1st, 2021. I've already got it in there. Let me do it again. 10 for October period to separate the month from the day. And I do 0, 01 for the day. And then 2, 01 for 2021. I hit enter and I check it. Okay, good. That's my redemption date. Down arrow. Redemption value is what we also, we tend to call that par or face value of 100. That's the default. I'm going to leave it. My day count is 360. That's correct. But if I had if I had reset the calculator to default, I believe that I would be looking at uh, actual day count, which again would be appropriate if it were a U.S. Treasury bond. It's a corporate bond. So if I see this, 
I am going to notice notice the calculator is even telling me how to change it. I go set. It's right here. It's a second function. I go second set. Switches me to 360. I don't actually need to hit enter. I'm going to go down arrow. Two periods per year is a default. I'm not going to change that. My yield, you can see here, is 4% per annum. I enter and I go down one arrow and I have the price and now I have finally I can compute the price on the settlement date which was that first value var variable in the bond worksheet so I'm just gonna hit compute and I get the correct uh, price of this bond 109.8936 and that is the correct flat price Notice, at this point, down arrow, I get the accrued interest, $3.75. I'm going to go ahead and store that currently in two so I can use it later. And then I'm going to finish with the bond worksheet. Clear, clear, clear. And now I'll show you the other way I could do it, which does not involve the bond worksheet, um, and but that is use the time value money keys, but does require us to be thoughtful about the dates. And that is to say, we are pricing it on the settlement date. And what I can basically do is walk back to the last coupon and price it as of the last coupon date, and then compound it forward to the settlement date. And the reason I need to do that, if I'm not gonna use the bond worksheet, is that these time value money keys um, I really can't put in a non-integer -integer value for the end. I don't get the correct answer. So I'm going to walk back from settlement date to the last coupon, April 1st, 2019, and I'm going to price the bond as of this date. Right, and now it's a semi-annual bond. I have how many semi-annual periods or semesters from this date to maturity? Well, it's... Um, it matures on October 1st, so it's two, it's two years as of October, which would be four periods. So we're five semesters or periods from the last coupon to maturity. I'm going to say five is N. Again, that's five semesters from the last coupon date of April 1st to maturity, which is two and a half years. My interest per period, my yield per period, the next key, I like to go left to right is I have a 4% per annum. We're doing now doing this per period. So that would be a yield per period of two or a semi-annual yield, if you like. Uh, the PV I'm going to skip because I'm going to come back and compute that price. The payment is the semi-annual coupon. My coupon rate is 9% per annum. So that's nine on a face value of 100, that's $9 per year, but it's paid semi-annually. So that is $4.50 as the payment and finally my face value maps to the future value is 100 i enter that i've entered four of the five time value money now i can compute the present value and i get 111.7836 let's pause to consider which kind of price is it that's a discounted cash flow that is the cash price or the full price. It is not the flat price. I'm going to um, negate the negative, make that a, po a positive price, and store it in one. But what I have there, again, is the full price as of the last coupon date. So I want to compound that forward to the settlement date. And I would do that by taking 1.02, which is just 1 plus 4% divided by 2. And I'm going to compound it forward, say y to the x, the number of semi-annual periods, which we're, our settlement date is 150 days since the last coupon on a 30 by 360 divided by 180 over the full semi-annual period, right? So that's 0.83 repeating. That's the exponent here in the xy. I had equals. And what I have here is my multiplier, right? This is what I would multiply of that price on the last coupon date to compound it forward to the settlement date. So now I'm going to multiply that by the price that I stored. 
And now what I have is I've compounded forward to the settlement date. I have a price on the settlement date of September 1st, 2019. However, what does it represent? Well, we did a discounted cash flow effectively on the coupon date. We computed a full or cash price on that coupon date, April 1st. We compounded forward, therefore, to what is a full or cash price on this settlement date, meaning I can subtract the accrued interest coupon that I previously stored and I get the flat price 109.8936. You'll notice that matches exactly the flat price that I computed with the bond worksheet. So that's the second way to do it. I actually like both. Um, the second, this approach I just showed you makes it really forces us to think about what we're doing and the difference between a full and a flat price. If this video is helpful, subscribe to the channel and you'll get a notification when I do the next one. Thank you.